Greetings everyone and welcome. Tambucha here and I'm back in my clone of Peppermint OS. This is MX Linux version 23 and this was the beta 2 version but I updated everything so it should be as current as the latest release candidate. Now in my last video this one here I showed you guys how I installed a customized version of MX Linux onto my son's computer. Now I will show you how to create your own custom ISO. So the first thing you want to do is you want to remove all the apps that you do not want and install all the apps that you would like to add to your new ISO. I already did that. I'm not going to go through everything, but here's the stuff I removed and basically all of this is what I added. So these are all the apps here and I also added a Samsung printer driver. I also, this part here is steps that I used to install the proprietary NVIDIA driver. I did that manually. And I also recommend using these commands here so that way it'll clean up unneeded files and that will cr create a smaller ISO when you start building it. Okay, so with that out of the way, you also need to copy some files over to your system folders. What do I mean by system folders? I mean anything that is not your home folder. So for example, I have some icons here in my home folder. It's in the dot icons directory. So this is a hidden folder and this is the icon theme here. So you want to add those icons to slash user slash share slash icons. I already did that. So it's over here. Also with anything in your dot themes folder, you see these are the custom themes that I added. So you want to add those to slash user slash share slash themes. And once again, I already did that over here and I also removed in here a bunch of themes that I did not want in, to, in the install process. Also in slash user slash share slash backgrounds, I modified this folder here also. I removed what I didn't like and added uh, my own default backgrounds also here. Now with that out of the way, I should also note that anything in your home folder will be deleted. So if you want any customizations that are in your home folder, you have to go to this directory here, slash Etsy, slash scale, and it'll be hidden at first. So you just do control H to unhide it. So here, for example, in this config dot config folder, I want to delete this this one here and I want to add the one that I modified so I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here so in the new ISO it will have all my custom XFCE settings because I copied this file over this folder over to here also anything else in your home folder that you want to add you should add to this one here so for example, I want to add my bash history because I like to keep a copy of the commands that I created. So I'm going to copy this. Oops, copy this. I want to copy my bash RC file and also this aliases file here. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste over here and replace all of it. And I think I'm good to go with that. So by the way, if you don't know how to run your file manager as root, you just do sudo and the name of your file manager. Then you can access your system folders. But be very careful because if you screw up, then it might break your system. So just be careful that you know what you're doing and don't be, don't be deleting folders that you don't understand what they're used for. Okay, so after you copied all your icons, backgrounds, themes, and all your default settings that you want to copy over, the next step is to start building the ISO. So MX Linux 
has a very useful tool here. So you go into the tools section, you hit this icon here, enter your password, and it'll take you to the MX snapshot tool. And this tool is very easy to use. Here I'm gonna rename it. So I'm gonna call it Tambucha MX. And I'm gonna make the version 23.3. Hit next. You can change the directory if you want here, but I'm gonna keep it as the default. Oh, okay, something happened. Okay, you know what, I'm gonna change the directory to downloads. And I'm gonna hit next. And from here, you have different options of compression levels. I choose this one because that will give you the smallest ISO, the smallest size. And here, the default is preserving accounts. So this is, this option will keep your home folder and the contents in your home folder but the first time I tried this tool I kept it with this option and my ISO was over 50 gigs in size so I don't recommend this version or this option I recommend this one here so after I tried this option for the first time my ISO was a little under 4 gigabytes so that's much more acceptable so here I got the options that I want and I'm gonna hit next and it's going to give you the option to shut it down when it's done making the ISO. I'm just going to keep it as is. I'm not going to shut it down. I'm going to hit OK. And then from here, it's going to start doing its thing. It's going to take a little while, so I'm going to come back when it's finished. OK, it's almost complete, so I just wanted to leave the final section of the process so you could see what's going on. So as you can see it copied the ISO file over here and if I right click it and hit properties oh, it's going to take a bit of time. You can see it's 3.2 gigabits and this is the checksum file here and it's calculating the checksum and from here it shows that it was done in 10 minutes 32 seconds so wasn't that long at all now that I have the ISO created the next thing you want to do is you want to copy that over and create a live USB stick so I'm going to insert my USB stick now and then I'm going to go to the MX tools section and click this link here Hmm, what happened? Oops, wrong password. Okay, so it detected my USB stick and all I want to do is I want to find the ISO file. So I copied it to downloads, snapshot, and I want to choose this one here. And now I want to name it, I'll just name it custom MX and that's about it I'm good to go I just hit next it'll ask me if I'm sure I wish to continue hit yes and now it's gonna start creating the live USB stick this also is going to take some time so I will pause the video and come back when it's finished Okay, so it's been hanging at 99% for quite some time now, but just please be patient. It will finish the job. Just let it complete its thing and then we can proceed on to the next step. There we go. So it says it took 6 minutes and 38 seconds. Now I got a custom MX Linux ISO, if I go to my folder section here, you can see it renamed my USB stick to what I wanted, which is custom MX. Now all I'm going to do now is I'm going to insert this USB stick into my son's computer and I'm going to capture it using 
a video capture card and just note that the screen quality on my capture card is only 720p for some reason but that's enough for you to know what's going on anyways so I'll be right back okay so this is the screen footage of the capture tool from my son's computer I chose legacy mode and note the date July 23rd in the menu and after some time it'll boot into this live USB environment and you notice it copied all my customizations over my wallpaper my menu my custom icons so that's fantastic I finally figured out how to copy over my um, XSCE panel settings over here I'm testing my key bindings so that worked as well out of the box which is great and it also copied my folder my files from my home folder over so I got my aliases file and my bash RC and my bash history file here I like to keep a copy of the commands I entered so that's great as you can see it's got OBS studio installed and this is the GNOME software center it takes a bit of time to load I fast forwarded it a bit but everything is working out of the box and yeah so that's a brief overview of the custom ISO that I created and I'm not gonna install it because the changes I made were minimal so there you have it that's my how-to on creating a custom MX Linux ISO and this snapshot tool is an amazing tool I wish I discovered it sooner but even though all these other tools here are great this snapshot tool this live USB maker tool and also this other tweak tool here the tool that allows you to customize your XFCE panel and have multiple configurations those are the three main tools for me that set MX Linux apart from all the other Debian based distributions or all other Linux distributions in general I can honestly say that this distribution here MX Linux is among my top five Linux distributions and this one is a keeper for me but I hope you've enjoyed this video thank you for those who have subscribed please like and share <laughs> please like and share but until next time take care everybody <laughs>